Welcome to a new edition of 2020. I'm the host of the session, John Gerges, and I'd like to introduce my distinguished guests. Hi, I'm Mark. I go to St. Bouchoy's Coptic Orthodox Church in Stovo. Hi, I'm Lydia. Um, I go to St. Mark's Scarborough. Hi, my name is Mark. I go to St. Bouchoy's Stovo as well. Hi, I'm Rena, and I go to St. Mark's Scarborough. Excellent. Let's begin. The topic for tonight's session is sin. And I'd like to begin by reading from Genesis chapter 3. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Now the serpent was more cunning than all the wild animals the Lord God made on the earth. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat from every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden, but from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not die by death, for God knows in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God's knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree beautiful to co contemplate, she took its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of the two were opened, and they knew they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So let's talk about what happened. What is sin? Sin is when you disobey God, because something else looks good and pleasing to the eye, like how um, the Bible described it. You know, God told, specifically gave them instructions, and they decided to disobey it because something else looked pleasant. And I think, you know, if we had our eyes really set on the most pleasant and the most, you know, um, the most good, we really wouldn't have to sin. But since our eyes are kind of focused on the quick fix, the easiest to get, you know, the apple was right in front of her, or the fruit, I'm sorry. The fruit was right in front of her. She could have just taken and eaten, you know? She didn't take the effort to actually go to another tree and look to past the fake good and the fake pleasing. I think sin, um, in this case, has a lot to, to do with temptation. If she wasn't tempted in the beginning, she wouldn't have fell, fell into sin. So a lot, even in our lives, we've been, we, t we get tempted, and that makes us um, breach away from God and commit the wrong thing. Okay. I think that sin, in the sense of the story in Genesis, it's the first time that Adam and Eve realized they were human, um, realized that we are fallible, realized that we can make mistakes. Um, sin is a very human characteristic. It's not uh, something that transcends humanity. Uh, you won't find sin in that category. Um, God, um, God is not involved in any type of sin. But as humans, uh, we're succumbed to sin. We are going to sin. We are subject to the original sin. Um, and so that's why we need to be saved. Um, because we have that original sin because we are human. But uh, that original sin after baptism is done away with, right? Yeah. So but specific. yet we continue to sin. Definitely. Yes. Because that's by our nature. Um, God created all of us, and with the original sin, we've all, we're all bound to sin. It's because after baptism, we still stay human, I think. Our nature is still in us, even after baptism. It's just baptism is like the initiation. Say, yeah, initi in initiation of our faith and the Holy Spirit. And then that's when the Holy Spirit comes into us as a conscience telling us, you know, um, like, like giving us the hints of what's wrong and what's right and giving us the feeling initially, you know. So sin, simply put, is disobedience, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I like to think of sin actually as an equation. Let me share it with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So temptation equals opportunity plus selfish desire. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Yeah, definitely. More or less. Opportunity plus selfish desire 
equals temptation. Yeah. It doesn't equal sin. We it haven't sinned sin, yet. Yeah. That's true. If you take away one of those in the equation, so you take away an opportunity, if you look back at Genesis yeah, chapter exactly. 3, if the tree wasn't there, if the fruit wasn't there, there wouldn't have been an opportunity. But going back to what you said, if she didn't seek the opportunity, if there was no selfish desire to get that opportunity, she wouldn't have been tempted. She could have bypassed the tree. Mm -hmm. She chose not to. She could have chose not to listen to the serpent, but she listened. So the opportunity plus the selfish desire equals temptation, not sin. What is sin? Sin is temptation plus action. Mm -hmm. For sure. Definitely. If you act, on the temptation, you committed sin. Okay. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, there's an opportunity. She saw. Now look at the next sentence. Was pleasant to the eyes. The opportunity is continuing. And what's it going to create within her? Temptation. A desire, which is going to equal temptation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a tree beautiful to contemplate and be wise, there's the desire. Build up. There's the temptation. What had happened? She took and ate. There's the action. When we sin without knowing, does that same equation apply? Well, let's take a look at an op let's take a look at a situation. So we could, um, you're talking with a friend, uh, possibly, and you say something that offends them, but you didn't know that it would offend them, um, or you didn't know it hurt their feelings in a sense. Um, you're sinning without knowing, are you still, is it a still selfish desire and you're taking that opportunity to act on that selfish desire, is that, or sorry, taking the opportunity to act on the temptation, are you being tempted in that case? What do you guys think? I don't think it applies. If, it, if you didn't, know what you were doing then there's no you, you can't, desire. there's no selfish desire because you didn't have the desire to do it and because it's, it's no like like it's a formula right so or i'm just thinking of it in terms of a formula you can't it'll never work if you don't have both parts of the formula and if you really don't have the desire the knowledge to do it right you mm -hmm. know there's so yeah, can't I don't really be counts, done no I mean, later on, you could think about it and be like, oh, maybe I did sin and confess about it. But at the same time, I don't think the whole selfish desire thing applies. You know, there's different types of sins. And mm -hmm. This is an unknowing sin, I guess. And it could have been a mistake. You yeah. just, just made, you know, just a, a simple mistake. And, and God knows, like, God knows your heart. So he knows, but like, what, like, he knows you're genuine. Like, do you mean to do it or you don't mean to do it? So it's all up to, you know, like, God knows us in our hearts, each of us. Absolutely. If we know how sin occurs, and we know the formula or the equation of sin. And we work backwards. Think about your own lives. Because I think about mine. You could definitely prevent it if you look backwards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If I know what is going to tempt me, again, let's work on the first formula, the first equation. What's going to tempt me is an opportunity plus a selfish desire. I can work on both. I can work on my selfish desire, and I can also work to avoid Opp opportunities. opportunities. Yeah. Right? That's true. You create your own opportunity. And that'll avoid temptation as a whole for, for, your, right. for you to actually mm -hmm. sin. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it is possible then to avoid as much as possible the temptation. Yeah. Right. And God willing, with His grace and His power and His strength in us, when we call upon Him, he strengthens us so that even when we do sin, and we will sin, that he will forgive us. But I want to ask you um, about the devil. Mm -hmm. Does the devil read our thoughts? No. I don't think so. I don't think he reads our thoughts. Like, it's not directly he can read our thoughts, but I'm, I know that he studied us for a lot of years, so our thoughts are kind of... Like, it starts with a thought and then ends with an action. So he, like, can predict kind of thing um, what we're going to do because he knows us. He's an expert at what 
He's an expert at what he's been studying us. So I, I don't think he can, I don't think God gave him the power to read our thoughts, but rather predict our actions. I think the devil knows exactly what situation or exactly how to tempt you. He knows exactly how to push your buttons. Um, he Sometimes it's a generalization of humans, which, like as she said, he knows humans very well. Um, but he also knows the weak. I think he knows the weaknesses of humans very well. Exactly. Um, so he knows exactly what buttons to push. Um, our job, I think, is to realize that, and to realize that while we may have weaknesses, um, we have more strength than he does. I think. Yes, we do, and we've been yeah. given that authority uh, through the victory of the cross, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He has given us that victory. I also think, kind of, he might not be able to read your mind, but he's not. He's not dumb either. So once he sees you've fallen for one time, you know, he can Slightly. see your thought process to ha how you felt. You know, he looks at the final process and then looks at the steps to get you there. Mm -hmm. And then uses those steps against you. Usually sins are very recurrent, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't just commit a sin and stop it and never do it again. And mm -hmm. he wants so you to continue. He may not be able to read your mind the first time you do the, thought, the, the sin, but he can work his way back and, yeah. you know, yeah. be able to pinpoint how you fell the and then you fall again and push you down. Yeah. So absolutely. Manipulation. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, he sets the trap Definitely. and he sets the bait. But whose choice is ultimately to take the bait? It's us. It's us. We are the ones who make the choice. He's not gonna he's not gonna hold a gun to our heads mm -hmm. and say, you need to sin. He'll never do that. But he the trap is set and the bait is set. And the situation will be, the opportunity is there. Now I got to work on the selfish desire, so I'm not tempted. But even if I am tempted, as long as I don't do the action, I won't sin. So you see how it works backwards. So knowing how sin works in our lives, just like knowing how an enemy works, you can be proactive to try to defeat the enemy in your life. I right? think it's a smart thing to do. Right? Absolutely. Like, like if you are in a battle, you're fighting sin, you should know your enemy, right? Exactly. Yeah. And when we know our enemy, we're better equipped to be able to fight, mm -hmm. fight him, right? Exactly. We can't fight him, though, without the power of God and his word. You can't do it yourself. Sword. We can't do it on our own. Yeah, the word of God is your sword. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for attending another session of 2020, and we invite you back very soon. God bless.